Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast on Texas Boxing Scene. Um, yesterday we did a show on Virgil Ortiz, uh, the fight being made official with the Mean Machine. Um, we're not going to keep saying his name. Today we're back. Uh, we're going to break down uh, this weekend's fight in uh, my second city, my home away from home, San Antonio, Texas, Alamo City, one of my favorite places on earth. Um, and we had a great scrap. Uh, Charlo, Jamel Charlo uh, against Gustavo for the undisputed 154-pound world title. Um, before we get into all that, please like and subscribe, share all forms of social media, 3D Boxing, um, twice a day with quick hits, either on this channel or the main channel. Uh, but this channel, all proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. It's near and dear to our heart. Uh, please like and subscribe. Please share this channel. Um, um, help us get this monetized as quickly as possible. Help us get this up and running. Um, a charity near and dear to our heart. But we'll, let's get it. Let's get into. Let's get into the fight. Uh, the main event: Jamal Charlo from Houston, Texas, versus Brian Castano. And this is an offensive firepower. This is offensive. You can't miss. Um, I, I want to get into it. Right. I, I, I watched a lot of tape on both fighters today. Um, I wanted to go back and kind of. Tell you what I saw because this is such a good fight. It's such a good contrast in styles. Castano mixes up his offensive attacks so well. Head body, head body, head body. He uh, disguises his because he's short. He disguises his right hand really, really well. He brings it in. Um, he, he loops it in, but he disguises. He puts it behind other stuff. He'll go downstairs. He'll go up uh, upstairs with a left hook. Downstairs with a left hook. Little jabs. Somebody sneaks in the right hand really well. He disguises his power, his big right hand, really well. He keeps you on the ropes. This is going to be tell. I, I'm going to get into Charlo. Charlo needs to – Casado's too good. He's, it's not like he's not going to get on the inside. He's going to have time to get to the inside. Because Charlo needs to not get too greedy, not change with him, take what he can get and get out. Um, Castano is so good at keeping you there. That's going to be the story of the fight, right? When Castano can get you into the ropes, he keeps working. His footwork is fantastic. He can keep your corner. He can cut off the ring. He can keep you in the works in the ropes and really start working you over. Um, he's, like said, his feet. He's got really good feet. His feet is what makes him such a good offensive fighter. Now defensively, he's got a million holes, right? And Charles is going to hit him a lot. Charles is going to hit him a lot. Um, but, he, you know, when he gets him, when Casano gets him on the ropes, when Casano gets on the inside, he's got to let the hands go. He's got to keep letting the hands go. He's got to hurt him. He's got to slow him down. Okay? That's what Castano has to do. Let's flip it around. Let's look at the other end. WBC, WBA, IBF, junior middleweight champ, Houston, Texas own, Lions only, Jamel Charlo. What does he need to do? He's tall. It helps him. Fortunately, Castano fights tall fighters really well. We saw that with Teixeira. We saw that with Laura. He fights tall fighters well. Charles got to use it to his advantage. Charles got, is a much quicker fighter. Okay? He's probably got more one-punch power. He needs to keep him at range. Either at the mid-range or the long range. He's got to dominate. He doesn't have to win the battle of the jabs. He's got to dominate the battle of the jabs. Okay? He needs to stay off the ropes. Um... When he gets into the ropes, he swings wildly. He gets too greedy. This is what I was talking about before. He takes too much. What he needs to do is not do that. He needs to keep his punches short, keep them tight, and take what you can get, tie him up, smother him, roll out. Don't stay in the ropes. Now, again, Castano's really good. So Castano's not going to just let you get out, let you get into trouble. He's a master at keeping you in trouble. Um, he's got to get back on the outside and snipe. 
And he's got such a high reach advantage. You know, he can land the lead left hook. He can land lead right hands. And then just keep jabbing him. Touch him to the body. Don't let him get comfortable. Right? Keep him moving. He's flat footed. You're quicker. Uh, you're a fleeter. You have the. <laughs> wow, I'm trying to go. The fleeter feet and the fleeter hands and the quicker hands. Use that to your advantage. Right? You can't. This fight's not going to go the distance. I, I'm betting the ranch this fight does not go the distance. Someone's getting stopped in this fight. Someone's getting stopped in this fight. Uh, and a little bit, I'll tell you who I think it is. But that's Charlo's plan, right? So touch them to the body. Don't let them get comfortable. Whack them with the right hand. Whack them with the right hand. Pivot, roll out. Keep moving. Don't let Castano get on the inside. Um, if he uses his jab, whacks him with the right hand, he's got an easy path to victory. His, his, his path to victory is, is on the outside and the mid-range. He's actually got two paths to victory, right? Kisano's only got one. One, Get on the inside, rough him up. That's it. And Kisano's a master at that. Kisano is better offensively than Charlo. Charlo's got more natural advantages. He's quicker. I think he's the bigger hitter. So how does this fight go down, like I said? Uh, it's not going to go the distance. Not. That's why it's going to end in a knockout. I, I think, like I said, Charlo gets too greedy on the inside. I don't think he's a particularly good fighter on the inside. I think he swings too wild. I think that's going to be his downfall. I think they're going to – too much of this fight for Charles liking is going to take place on the inside. Too much of it. Um, he's going to get too brave. He's going to trade too much. And uh, Kasano's going to wear him down, beat him up. And I think he gets a late stoppage. I'm going to say 10th round. I think Kasano stops him in a really fun fight. A fight he could be losing on the cards on. But this is going to be a fun fight. I think. Uh, Castano, the pressure, he's going to he's gonna hurt him later in the fight by weighing him down. When he gets him hurt, he's not going to let off the gas, and he's going to get a stoppage. Uh, so I'm officially picking Castano. I, I text box scene. Y'all aren't going to love this. Um, H-Town's not going to love this. I'm officially I, I'm officially taking Castano by 10th round knockout. Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Leave your predictions uh, below. Let me know who you think. Let me know who y'all think is going to win this fight. Um, Please, again, Texas Boxing Scene, uh, all um, proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. Um, charity that's really near and dear to our heart. Um, you guys can look up TACA, the Autism Community Action. Um, that's uh, the charity that we're working with. Um, again, please subscribe to the channel. Please share it. Please help us get this monetized as quickly as possible. Um, from Texas to the world, thank you. And God bless.